And it was great to hear the earlier uh, presentation. Uh, and uh, in a way, I'm starting uh, where they ended in terms of thinking about these issues about how we can support open science, particularly in an area in mental health where people are so concerned about privacy and um, uh, protection. So that's what I'm gonna talk about today. Uh, so let me just check if I can move these slides. Yes, so uh, for those who don't know, the Wellcome Trust is a big biomedical research funder. Um, we give out about a billion a year in uh, research funding. And uh, we have now committed that mental health is one of the three main focus we have alongside infectious diseases and the effect of climate on health. So um, real commitment uh, from us to really try and uh, move this field forward. And um, as others have said, we see data being absolutely key to this. So I probably don't need to say to this audience already that we know that mental health is one of the um, largest problems, but we know very little about the mechanisms that drive clinical impact or the interplay between biological, psychological and social factors and we need more personalized information, um, interventions, and we need data to help us get there. So uh, at the moment, we've got uh, a range of disciplines who are collecting data on one aspect, so whether it's biological, psychological, or social, and they're not really coming together. And so, and also there is um, lack of sharing learning from across those different research communities. And so the data sets tend to be limited and as was said earlier, they're also very hard to get access to. One of the things I think is a particular issue for mental health research data that we're particularly interested in at Welcome is the fact that um, we want to look not just at healthcare data sets, but we see mental health is bigger than healthcare. Many, many people with mental health problems never access uh, healthcare systems, and yet their problems resolve or um, uh, develop in different ways. And we need to know as much about them as we do about the minority that access healthcare if we're really going to understand how problems change over time, both with interventions and without interventions. So um, we're also very aware of the fact that mental health research funding is skewed and uh, as is the research agenda. So both funding and research have been skewed towards largely white urban groups and largely in high income settings with limited global applicability and limited diverse, diversity of participants, which makes it hard for us to draw conclusions about the many people we want to know about. And there's a particular lack of capacity in low middle income country settings and um, a need to make sure that we are building that capacity both from a research point of view and in terms of the uh, subject matter uh, point of view. We're very aware also that, uh, you know, just making things equal doesn't make them equitable. Um, and we need to make sure that any uh, data that are collected in low resource settings and low middle income countries aren't just vacuumed up by high income uh, country based researchers in the form of, sort of data colonialism. So we need to find ways to balance that, but also make sure that the research, this important research, just gets done. Um, I think one of the things that we are very aware of and is true of all uh, health data, but perhaps particularly of um, mental health data, is that there are all sorts of assumptions that both researchers and policymakers have that may actually hold back the research agenda in relation to uh, mental health and that we have been uh, not as advanced as we should have been perhaps in the past about how we involve the people who are the providers of that data in terms of decisions, both about how the data are held, how they're used and what the research questions that they are most interested in answering. So I'm gonna to talk today about two particular projects that we are funding that I think speak to this and, and are of maybe of interest to, to you in terms of thinking about how we might advance our agenda of finding better, more personalized interventions. The first is a project that is designed to make better use of existing data, which is a data prize where we'll be announcing uh, how you can apply for that prize um, shortly. And the second is a feasibility trial that we have commissioned, looking at different ways that we can collect data at scale that will address the sort of questions, the issues that Zad was talking about, about how can we balance privacy with open access? How can we make these data accessible so that people, researchers aren't spending four years of their lives trying to get at, at data that actually could hold answers that we need to advance our agenda? So in terms of the data prize, this will be launched in February of next year. 
And we are at the moment working with um, a commission group, Social Finance and Data Kind, who are scoping existing data sets to try and make sure that they're going to be accessible at the point at which we make the prize open so that the researchers themselves won't need to be doing the negotiation that would have been done in advance and that people will then be able to use these data sets to explore the sort of questions that we are interested in, particularly about what are the factors that uh, help explain what help people recover from mental health problems. Um, and we're gonna be bringing together mental health research and data scientists through this process. Just to be clear, the 200 million, the 2 million is the full amount that we are uh, providing to this project. That won't be the full prize. The prize is part of that. There's other work that comes within that uh, amount. Uh, one of the things we will be doing, one of the principles we'll be drawing on for this prize is making use of a range of data sets, which might be health care data, but it might also be longitudinal data from community samples or from other sorts of bodies. Uh, we want to make sure that we're addressing research questions that answer the particular issue for us about in terms of what works for whom and how. We're committed to trying to um, find ways to involve people with lived experience of mental health problems to help steer and shape how the research is done, to bring together multidisciplinary teams and raise opportunities for computational innovation in mental health. We're working on this particularly with colleagues across Wellcome who lead on data for science and health projects more broadly. We'll be providing seed funding to enable the broadest possible participation. And we're going to ensure that uh, the, the prize will be focused particularly in the UK and South Africa. And while we welcome global teams, the lead must come from within those communities. Happy to discuss our thinking on that. The second uh, study I wanted to tell you about is the MindKind study, which is a two year fe feasibility trial led by Sage Bio Networks, it includes a consortia in South Africa, uh, the UK and India. And it involves both researchers and young people with lived experience of anxiety and depression who are trying to, to investigate different ways that we can set up data collection from the start that balances the needs of open science with the needs of um, the young people who are providing their data being maximally involved in decision making around how that those data are collected, what data collected and uh, the research agenda. Also looking at how we bring together data from across geographies and what regulatory and other uh, barriers and opportunities we need to address as we do that. Uh, so what we're doing is building a prototype data bank. We're focusing particularly on data related to sleep, bodily movement, social connections and positive activities as a sort of lens to look at the range of data that we may want to collect. In time, we would also want to have biological and other data in there. And we're looking to, to try and address about four and a half thousand participants, but it is a feasibility trial, so we'll see how feasible that is. We're taking a form of um, a deliberative democracy to inform a qualitative study that will be part of this feasibility trial, where people with lived experience are talked through different models of data governance, so they can think through what they would prefer and what sort of model they would be most interested in. And we're co-designing it with professional groups of young advisors in each of the three geographies to try and um, help us think through different ways of, of developing government structures that make most sense. Bringing together passive and active in data and really focusing on these technical, regulatory and cultural factors that may make a difference. And looking to see um, through a randomised trial whether what makes a difference in terms of whether people are allocated to different models of data stewardship and how that affects engagement with data. So rich learning, it were, it's not a trial to actually understand the impacts of sleep, bodily movement, social connections on mental health outcomes. It's a trial to, if you were trying to do that, how could you set up governance that would allow you to really do that in a way that balances these different agendas? And I will pause there and hope we look forward to a rich discussion. Thank you.